All right, what's up everyone? Um, 10K subscriber special, and um, right now we're gonna do the Q&A. Uh, so I asked you guys to ask some general questions, about one question each, and you guys went ahead and asked that, and so we're gonna go through and answer. Um, I picked about 60 or so of um, most of the questions, there were a few I unfortunately had to leave out, um, but I think I got the best ones in my opinion, and um, let's get started. Uh, so the first question is by Pyropause Music, and he wants to know what inspired me to make music. Um, that's a good question. What inspired me to make music was probably um, the uh, Brony fandom, um, and you know everything that comes comes with the Brony fandom, um, and that's uh, mostly just because. Um, I'd sort of become a fan, and I'd noticed that a lot of people were putting out cool content, um, writing stories, drawing art, uh, making music, and I really wanted to get into that. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I was always sort of a creative type, um, so I really liked that. Um, and one of the things, uh, I actually started out drawing art and doing vector art, um, and that skill actually helps me in my main channel, because I do a lot of the art on my main channel. Um, but yeah, so the, the main inspiration there was that fandom, um, which led me to eventually make music. Um, now, what inspired me to make the certain type of music I did uh, was more of like uh, t old, older techno artists, um, like Bass Hunter and DJ Splash, um, but that was more or less um, what genres they inspired me to make. Uh, so that's that question. Um, on to the second one. Uh, how do you make music? So I make my music in a program called FL Studio. Um, it's a fairly cheap program, I would say. Um, it's only about 200 bucks, so if you want to learn um, get into making music. It's not too much of an investment, um, and it comes with pretty much everything you need to get started. Um, so that's FL Studio. I would definitely uh, check that out if you're ever interested in making music. Um, there's also a lot of tutorials online um, that'll teach you how to use it. Uh, next question is, um, why did you partner with 99 Lives to make music uh, for them for such a short time? Um, I didn't actually, I wouldn't say it was a short time. I made music with them for quite a decent amount of time. I had to be probably, I probably have, out of like all the people on there, I'm probably one of those who had the most songs on there. Not the most, but I was, definitely had quite a bit of songs on there. Um, and I was on there for, I would say, it was like a year or two or something, I don't know, but I did have a lot of Stahl collabs. Um, but I did recently sort of maybe, I didn't stop working with them, um, but I haven't really released any songs on there. And I think that's just sort of the direction their label's going in. Um, they, they sort of had a change of management, uh, as well as a and So they have a lot of new people in there. And I think they're just headed in a different direction than where I am. Um, that's not to say I won't release with them in the future. Um, but as of now, I don't have anything planned for them. Uh, a question in your future songs, could you take um, them out to use in Geometry Dash uh, and in the future? So you want to use the songs in Geometry Dash. Um, so basically, I do actually, I put them on Newgrounds, uh, it's in my channel description, or like on the links page, with all the links there should be a uh, Geometry, or a Newgrounds link that you can take the songs and put them in your uh, Geometry Dash games. Um, I haven't put all my songs on there, so if you want one specifically, just go ahead and message me on, um, like email me at condensadj at gmail.com. That's probably the best way to contact me. I'll, I'll put it up there if you want. Um, and I don't put all my songs up there because normally they just don't get as much um, support. I mean, obviously people like to use it in their Geometry Dash songs, but it's not as much as um, to make it worth it, in my opinion. But if, if there's enough demand, I'll certainly start doing that. Um, what is your favorite song you have created? Also, congrats on 10,000 subscribers. Uh, you deserve it because you're... Oh, thank you. Nice guy. Okay, so favorite song I created. Mm. Like, favorite to listen to? I would have to go my song Love with Forever Free Brony. I loved that song. <laughs> um, I liked it a lot because it was uh, sort of me trying something a little different with my future bass style. And also, um, I got to work with a really talented vocalist. He was really awesome, um, cool guy to work with. And I think we made a song um, that I actually personally really enjoy. Uh, and especially since we, I got it done in a pretty quick time, um, it didn't make me hate the song because I'd listened to it for hours on end. So, 
Love by Forever Free Brony is that question. Uh, do you like tacos? I freaking love tacos. Those things are so good. Um, any type of taco, really. I kind of have to be in the mood for it, but, um, you know, beef tacos, fish tacos, whatever kind of tacos you want, I'm your taco guy. Next question. Oh, we got a two-parter right here. Um, outside of music, what do you like to do in your free time? Any games, sports, or anything else? Uh, in the winter, I like to snowboard. Let's see, I have my snowboard back there. Um, that's uh, usually just do that on the weekends. You spend most of the times in the week working on music and stuff. In the summer, not much, but a lot of like outdoor activities like hiking and camping. Um, it's about where that is. Uh, second question is, but how long do you spend making music? And by that, how long does it take me to finish a song from start to end? And how much time do I spend per week working on it? That really depends on the song. Um, one where I'm trying something new, like Wicked or um, Nebula, um, or even Compass Rose with vocals and stuff, where I'm working on stuff I haven't before, those generally take a lot longer, uh, anywhere from 60, um, or like 50 to 80 hours. Um, and then some of the other ones, like the house songs that I've worked on, I've done them all before, um, and I can get them done really quick, anywhere from like 10 to 30 hours for those, not too much. Um, how much time a week do I spend working on it? Um, well, I spend about, I want to say like two to five hours per day. It's been a little less recently, and I'm not too happy about that. I kind of want to get back into the groove, making some good music, um, a lot more than I used to, but... Um, on average, it's about two to five hours a day. Um, and I also now I work on like DJing and stuff, so it's sort of split up into a bunch of different stuff, but um, that's about the average, I'd say. Uh, Lucas Carso wants to know, do I make music for a living? Yes and no. Um, and what I mean by that is it definitely cannot support me as a job, as a full-time job. It's more like a part-time job. Um, I'm still in high school, um, graduating this year actually, in a couple months. So a lot of high schoolers will have like part-time jobs where after school they'll go work at a diner for like two hours. Um, I'm fortunate enough that music can support me to where I don't have to do that and I can just go straight home and work on some music. Um, but I certainly is not a full-time job, at least now. Um, that'd be really great if it was in the future. Um, but for now it's more of just a, uh, it's nice to get money from it and be able to, um, justify me doing so much of it um, but it's definitely not quite there as being a full full-time job yet Duke or Cody Sorensen uh, wants me to give him and Dugong the red clouds FLP or I'll tell your wife zero I'll tell your wife zero that you're threatening me also I'm surprised it's got six likes what well, Andre what's up Andre uh, glad to see your success thank you very much do you have any upcoming tracks on 99 Lives or NCS? Um, I don't have any on either label right now. Um, let's start with 99 Lives, actually. Uh, like I said before, I probably won't have any tracks on 99 Lives. Um, pop, maybe forever, and maybe not. It really just depends on um, what happens, and I can't really say for certain. As of now, I don't have any plans to release with them. Um, and I don't have any songs in the works for them. So um, that's where that stands, but I can't say about the future. Uh, who knows, in a week maybe I'll be making making music for them again. Um, as for NCS, I currently don't have any songs for them. Um, nothing in the works. Uh, but later, maybe later this year, I'd, I'd love to have uh, sort of a return to their label. There's a really supportive fan base, um, and I love the community involved. So I'd really like to uh, get into that again. Um, RV does YouTube. Congrats on 10k. Thank you very much. Can you do a video tutorial about how to use FL Studio? I actually can and I have before. I've made a couple tutorials. Um, nothing uh, super basic. They're more of niche tutorials and um, some are a little more advanced. Um, and the reason I do that is because so many people already do a bunch of other tutorials on um, just the basics of FL Studio and any other doll you could be using. Um, so I, I tend to cover stuff that nobody's done before, um, so I would recommend looking at those first, um, but I do also have some tutorials in case you're interested. Uh, TCB wants to know if I come here often. I live here. How long have you been a brony? Um, I've been a brony for 
since I started producing about six months before. So it's it's been quite a long time, I would have to say. Uh, where do you get inspiration for your tracks? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, and the answer to that is, um, well, first off, generally, I get inspiration everywhere from almost anything. I don't think there's any one specific thing I can only get inspiration from. Um, I get it a lot from everywhere. Uh, but that being said, there's two uh, main things I get a lot of inspiration from. Um, the first one being already existing songs. I love listening to music, um, and if I hear an awesome song, um, typically that'll inspire me to make uh, a lot of music maybe like that or maybe not. Um, a good example was when I started making house music. I was definitely inspired by um, some other house songs that I heard and wanted to get into it. And uh, same with trap music. Um, other inspirations include uh, fan bases, sort of. Um, as you know, I like My Little Pony, so I make a lot of songs on that. I also like uh, The Maze Runner. I made a song on that, uh, Wicked, and um, also Mega Man Zero. I made uh, Harpuya. So uh, I, I love um, sort of like content and stories and stuff like that, and that stuff always inspires me. Um, I love it so much, I want to make more. Um, what genre of electronic music do I enjoy making and why? Honestly, um, if it's melodic, I like it. Um, some of my favorite ones are progressive trance, uh, trance in general, hands up. Um, I'm a little burnt out on house music and uh, recently future bass, um, but that's not to say I'm not going to go make one next week, you never know. Um, but I, I really just enjoy working with melodies and stuff like that. A lot of the genres I make, I do actually enjoy making a lot, um, and that would make sense. Uh, why do you have a unicorn as a profile picture? It doesn't seem very professional. Well, actually, would you rather would you rather my ch my channel look like this or this or this or this or this or this? They all look the same. See, that's the problem with a lot of people um, who get into music production or who. Um, I don't want to say just first start out because everyone does. A lot of people do it. Is um, they think they need to follow these set guidelines. They have to have their logo looking like this. They have to have their name looking like this. Their channel has to be absolutely cookie cutter, the same thing as everybody else. And how is that going to get you attention? If you look like everyone else, how is someone going to see you and remember you? Because honestly, they're not. They're, you're just going to look at someone and, and they're going to be the same and you're going to forget about it. I can, I can guarantee you, um, if you have, you know, uniqueness to your channel, something different, uh, even if it is weird in other people's opinions, it's going to make you stand out more, and uh, that's definitely going to help. Um, another, the other thing is, I, um, professionalism-wise, I don't really care. I, I like it, and so and it was fan art. Someone drew it for me, so I put it as my profile picture. It was awesome. I loved it. Um, and I don't think you should let um, professionalism get in the way of doing what you like. Now, obviously, um, there is something to be said. There's a misconception about what you think professionalism, I believe. Um, and that is that just the idea of a unicorn as your profile picture is unprofessional, which is just not true. Um, now, if the unicorn is, oh, is a character owned by someone else, like if I had a character from a TV show as my profile picture, that is, I can see how that would be unprofessional. You're using someone else's intellectual property um, as basically your own and that I can see how that would be unprofessional um, but when you own the character um, it's all original um, there is nothing unprofessional about that obviously um, there are people who have that misconception um, but I'm here to set them straight PUBG or Fortnite um, I'm a big fan of PUBG I think Fortnite is for little kids and PUBG is for real men <laughs> Next question. Uh, how much your music is inspired by the fandom and of that music? How do you draw any given inspiration into a unique musical piece? Even if it's just slapping a name inspired by the fandom on it. Um, I love all the, I love it all the same. Uh, so do the rest of the people. I should probably uh, explain what the fandom is. Um, obviously, it's, it's a group of people who like the show um, My Little Pony and create content based on it. Um, obviously, I've jumped in and out of that. Um, I've made quite a bit of songs and I do really, really enjoy that. Um, but I've also made a lot of other normal stuff that um, has brought me probably a lot of normal fans, I should say. Um, um, but inspiration wise, it honestly depends per song. Sometimes I slap, just slap a name on there, slap a picture of something I was vaguely inspired by and throw it up on my channel. 
where it was inspired by, could have been inspired by something completely different. Um, but sometimes I'm heavily inspired um, by something, and I don't even show it in a song. Like uh, the Compass Rose EP, that whole EP, and especially uh, the main song with Keto, was inspired by this story I read um, on like some trip I was on, and I uh, I read it and it was really awesome, um, and I loved it so much. I think it was called uh, Cartography of War, or something. It was this awesome uh, romance adventure um, story, and I was so inspired that I came home and was like, I want to make a song about this. So I did, and um, eventually turned into an EP, and then got released like a year later. So. Um, I think each song has its own little story, and uh, that's what makes them unique. Um, but what's cool is, even if I was inspired by a song, I like to think that the audience um, and whoever's listening to it can draw their own conclusions and make their own inspirations towards the song. Um, I don't want what I make my song about to be what the song is about. Um, I could make a song about, um, about cats, and it doesn't have to be about cats to you. It can be about whatever you want, and I think that's what makes music so beautiful is it's able to mean what you want it to mean to you. Um, Mr. Tree brought me here, wants to know, what do you do when you have a rock in your brain? A loss of inspiration or you can't come up with anything? Is there something you do that helps you come up with song ideas? That is a really good question and a really interesting saying. I've never actually heard that, so that's cool. Um, you know, everyone, everyone gets a rock in their brain. No matter how good you are, you could be the uh, world's best producer, you're still gonna get a rock in your brain. Um, and I find that generally happens a lot when you're doing stuff you haven't done before, like when you're trying new genres, trying new techniques, new styles. Um, and that's a good thing. Um, but obviously the rock in your brain um, and being stuck on something is generally a bad thing. Um, and everyone has to deal with it. Everyone has their own ways of dealing with it. My way isn't the way, um, but you're more than welcome to try it. So what I usually do is a little different than what most people would recommend and I just power through it. Say I'm stuck on a melody and I can't come up with a melody, what I'm gonna do is just keep working until I get a melody that sounds good. Um, and I know it sounds, um, it's hard, and honestly it kinda sucks when you're doing it, you end up hating it. Um, but then once you get a good melody, cause you can't work forever and not find a good melody, um, at least in my opinion. Um, so once you find a good melody, then you feel great and it's, totally worth all the torture that you put yourself through. Um, so pushing yourself uh, past that blockade, um, I think is is a good way to get past it. Um, again, that depends on the person. I know some people that would certainly not work well for them. Um, and another thing you can do too is say I'm stuck on a melody and I can't get it. Well, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll put that aside and I'll go work on something else. Like I'll go work on the uh, percussion or I'll work on the bass line or I'll find something else to work on, um, and then later I can come back with a fresh mind um, and solve the problem at hand. And so that's usually what I find um, helps me the best when I have a loss of inspiration. Um, but you just gotta deal with it sometimes, it sucks, um, but it's part of creating, and in the end I totally think it's worth it. Okay, Joes, uh Luis Garcia asks, Puedes hablar español y que opinas de tus segundas de habla España? Um, for the English speakers, I believe that says, do you speak Spanish and what is your opinion on Spanish speakers? Um, the answer to that is I do not speak Spanish very well. Uh, no hablo espanol muy bien. Um, I, honestly, I took a span couple Spanish classes in high school and I wish, wish I paid attention a little better, but, um, don't speak it very well. I can still do a little bit, but, uh, definitely not very good. Um, and my opinion on Spanish speakers, um, can only understand them a little bit, so. I don't, I don't, I don't mind the comments on my channel, because usually if I, if I look at them, I can read them. Um, so I'm more than welcome to comment in Spanish if that's your actual language. Um, but, yeah. If I had a million dollars, what would I do with it? Um, that's a very good question. I think I'd probably invest that, um, back into the future, uh, or something, um, I would definitely just wouldn't go and spend it all. I'd want to um, safely um, ensure that I could uh, have lots of that money um, near and into the future. Um, can you answer my question? How much do you like My Little Pony? That's a good question. Not enough. Next question is, DJ, who do you like? I assume um, that question is asking, who's your favorite DJ? 
Um, and the answer to that is probably uh, DJ Ravine. He's got a YouTube channel. He's more of a YouTube DJ. Um, but I've learned a lot from him. Um, his music and just his DJing skills. Not not his music, but like just uh, watching his videos. and Because um, he uses an ex-DJ in some of his videos. And I've been able to translate um, a lot of that into my videos. And um, how I DJ as well. So that's kind of cool. Cut. What do you think about Pony Gen 5? Um, to be completely honest, when I first heard about that, I was pretty sad. Um, for the first couple days, I was definitely, uh, uh, just, I don't even know how to describe it. I was just really upset. I didn't, I, you know, because I spent all this time and all this inspiration um, towards this, this group of characters and um, that we already have. And uh, to think that they are going away, it's, it's almost like canceling this show but promising to bring it back in a different form and i think i'd be less um pissed off if it wasn't for the characters that they were going to bring back which is basically them just i feel like I'm, I'm just worried they're going to teen titans go it and if they do that i'll be i'll be super pissed um but i'm hopeful and i'm optimistic i feel like um if they have the same group of writers i think they're going to um do a good job and i don't know why the company would want to shoot itself in the foot there so i definitely think moving forward, um, they're going to hopefully uh, deal with this in a positive way that will hopefully uh, refresh the brand and bring some new content to the stage. Uh, where do you see yourself in the fandom when Gen 5 comes? Uh, well, two things to that question. The first off, um, I'll still be making music, quite honestly. Um, I would probably be making music if it wasn't even for the fandom. Um, I make music based on a bunch of different stuff. It doesn't just have to be My Little Pony, and Maze Runner, Mega Man Zero, or even just random um, daily inspirations. Um, so I'll definitely still be making music. Um, and then if hopefully uh, Gen 5 is good, <laughs> to put it bluntly. Um, but if it's good, I'll certainly be making music about it. And even if it's not good, I'll probably still be watching it. So um, I can't see much changing other than just... Um, typical changes that were would happen anyway so i'll still be making music uh, nothing too big there um hey john big fan of your music ever since i discovered you through 99 lives freeze ah love that song glad you liked it too what is your favorite release to work on throughout your career Ooh, that's a good question actually i think i think freeze has to be one of them um Freeze was my first collab with Stahl, and that was a lot of fun. I loved collabing with him on that, um, and just being able to get someone else's ideas um, and, and seeing how someone else works. Because my collabs before that uh, weren't, uh, they, were, they were just different, and this one I felt like was, um, was different, and it was really fun to work on. Um, another fun one was Nebula. Nebula was so fun, um, and I think that's just because that was me trying house. Um, and then another one was... Um, Wicked, because again, I got to try new stuff. Any, I like anything where I get to try new stuff. Uh, what are the actual words said behind the song Wicked? Well, I actually just released a video um, going over Wicked, um, and there are no words at all. Zero. Um, it's the uh, Survive, uh, Survive, yeah, it's from my song Survive, it's cut up into that. I always thought it was like, um, reach your high, Farrah low, high. That's what they sounded like to me. Um, but everyone says it's free hentai. And, um, yeah. That, that's about that. Uh, why do you have so few of your songs put on Amazon Prime, iTunes, and Spotify? I would love to have more of your music on those platforms. Um, to be honest, I usually just put... I put most of my songs, my new ones on there. Um, there's two reasons for why they wouldn't be on there. One being I don't own the song, which would be in the case of a remix, um, or, or, a, or some other reason. Um, the record label maybe didn't want to put it on. Um, but those are, that's more for the reason for new songs is I can't legally put it on there cause I don't own the whole track. Um, and then the second one being, um, I don't like to put a lot of my older songs. I feel like they are not, um, I love them and I'm very proud of them, but I feel like my newer ones are a lot higher quality and I sort of want um, those websites to showcase that, that new content and not so much um, my more beginner stuff. Um, but uh, as far as iTunes and Amazon Prime, I do have, they're all free to download. So you can go and download them in the links. Um, and if a link's broken, 
uh, just tell me and I'll fix it. Um, and I can always send it to you. But um, yeah, just for those platforms, I like to keep it a little more of the, the, the higher tier stuff. What plugins do you use the most? Um, I use a lot of Silent One. Um, I'm trying to get away from it though. I feel like I use it a lot. Um, I use a lot of a Hollow Room. Um, Kickstart. I want to get a little. I want to get away from Kickstart. I use these pro, uh, pl plugins, but recently I've been wanting to get away from them because I use them so much. Um, I think I, I think that's about it. I, I use a lot of the stock FL ones. I, I love the stock uh, stock compressor in FL Studio. It's pretty good. Uh, what's your favorite food? Oh, that's a good question. I don't think I have a favorite food. I'm gonna be honest. Um, pizza, maybe. I don't know. I feel like if I eat one food long enough, it j I just get sick of it. So I, I can't have a favorite food. Otherwise, it'll then become my not favorite food. Um, but yeah, I like I like a lot of different foods. Um, a lot of variety. Uh, what artist do you get inspiration from, if any? Oh, man. I get, I get, I get inspiration from every artist I like. Um, I could sit here and talk for days about listing off the artists that I love. If I If I've listened to an artist... They've inspired me in a way. Um, some of the big ones, though, are like DJ Splash, um, which sort of inspired me to s make the genres I make. Um, but within those, um, a lot of other artists inspired me to make a bunch of different things. Uh, maybe you answered this in a previous video. Uh, I probably did in, in the hour-long Q&A. But I'll, I'll, I'll spare you. You don't have to watch it. I'll answer it here. How did you start all your music stuff? Meaning, did you copy tutorials or music styles uh, in the first place? Uh, and did you try out or music softwares? So basically, um, I didn't really, I copied some tutorials, but a lot of it was just self-experimentation. Um, the main tutorials I watched were how to make melodies, because the rest of it uh, I felt like was pretty self-explanatory through experimenting a little bit. Um, I, def I got a good feel for FL Studio before I made any songs. Um, but then, uh, after that, um, worked on melodies, um, but a lot of that, a lot of my early days of producing sort of came naturally, um, and I maybe would recommend it, maybe wouldn't. Um, I think it all just depends on, uh, what, um, what you want to accomplish, because it took me a little longer to get to the level that I wanted to be, um, and I think definitely having a friend who knows music, um, and maybe asking for some advice, some feedback, getting some friends who are where you're at, uh, skill level wise, um, is a great way to grow uh, off each other and feed each other advice. Um, as for music softwares, I, I'm just going to be honest, I pirated like half of them. Um, I bought them now, a lot of them now though, but um, a lot of the ones I use mainly. Um, but uh, honestly, that stuff costs thousands of dollars. Um, and if you, I know a lot of people don't want to do that and I completely understand. I do not re condone pirating at all, um, but I would recommend um, FL Studio. Just buying the DAW, it comes with all you need to get started. Um, all the stock plugins, and then once you um, can afford more, uh, maybe go and buy some cool, th some more third-party plugins. Um, plus, pirating plugins now is a lot harder than it was back then. I think um, I don't know. I haven't done it in a while. Uh, have you ever tried using GarageBand iOS? Actually, no. Uh, but I've tried FL Studio Mobile, which is like 20 times better. Here's a song I made. Why did you change your YouTube nickname? Well, Mr. Draconiger, if you paid attention to the channel, you would know, because I made like two videos on the subject. What is your own favorite song? Mine, uh, Wicked. I think I already replied to this one, um, but I'll say it again. It was the song currently playing now. Um, I really like that one currently. It's always changing. Um, and that's, it's not to say that's my favorite song, that's just the one I, I enjoy listening to at the current time. Um, it's always changing and I love all my all my music. There's not, I wouldn't say there's one I I'm, don't like. Um, but yeah, that's probably the one I'm enjoying listening to the most now. Um, do whatever you can to make you proud of your work. Uh, my questions are, uh, how can you gain as many followers as you can in the channel? Uh, what made you become a part of the MLP fandom being a brony YouTuber? Uh, first question, how do you gain as many followers as you can in a channel? Make good content. Um, two, there's there's a lot you can do. There's a there's a ton, and it goes into a whole whole business side of things. Um, and honestly, I could make an hour-long video on that. 
Um, and I, even I don't do the best at it. I could definitely do a lot more to grow. Um, but I feel like I'm, I'm comfortable where I'm at. Um, but how do you gain followers? Uh, the two main things are make good content. Whatever you're doing, you have to, you ha it has to be good. It has to be up to par. People need to watch it every day. Or not every day, but people need to be able to sit down and enjoy it. You can't make like something that someone's gonna look at and say, eh, I don't wanna watch that. Um, so yeah, enjoyable content, and um, the second one is um, your, ch your channel kind of has to look nice. Uh, obviously, you can get um, you can get away with. Actually, I take it back on that one. I've seen a lot of people with really crappy looking channels who get tons of fans. Um, to be honest, there's a bunch of ways to do it, um, and I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about the followers as much as putting out good t content and doing what you like. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, what made me become part of the MLP fandom being a brony YouTuber? I wouldn't... I, I, I hate calling myself a brony YouTuber because I don't want to limit myself to just brony stuff. I make a bunch of different stuff and it's a lot of other... I'm inspired by a lot of other things. Um, but what made me become part of it was like five years ago or six years ago, a couple months before I started producing, about half a year, I used to play Call of Duty a lot and I met a guy on there who um, basically told me about it. Um, I go more in... Uh, I go into it more in detail in my... Uh, 100k if you want to watch that hour-long movie, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it uh, Exploding Pony Toast wants to know um, Which label I enjoy releasing with the most 99 lives NCS or ponies at dawn and why you know? I'm gonna be honest. I don't really like releasing with labels. I'm more of a, a free self um, release person I like releasing by myself because then I know I'm not attached to any label and any individual, and I can be free to do with whatever the song, um, I can do whatever I want with the song and not have to worry about the label. Um, but which one do I like the most out of all those? Probably NCS, because I get like thousands of dollars from them. Uh, Top Ramen or Cup of Noodle? Um, that's a good question. My parents buy Top Ramen, and I don't eat it very much. I try not to eat, um, ramen even though I love it uh, but I definitely try and stay away from it as much as possible but whenever I buy it I try I always get cup of noodle I feel like that's a lot better um, and then crunchy or creamy peanut butter oh crunchy creamy peanut butter is just like bland like crunchy I, I can't describe it but it's like it's got like the texture that makes the sandwich good you know just if you haven't tried crunchy peanut butter try it unless you have peanut allergies uh, who's your biggest inspiration? DJ Splash. Gotta be honest. World's best producer right there. He made um, some of the best melodies in existence. And I'm finna fight anyone who's gonna think otherwise. How did you come up with the start of a song? Do you randomly play around or do you have an idea? Of, I, dude, I just mess around. I'm gonna be completely honest. I, I just push buttons till something sounds cool. Um, every now and then I'll have an idea of like a genre or a style I want to go for. Um, but... Usually that just entails me pushing buttons until I get something that sounds like that style anyway. So it's mostly just me messing around. What's your favorite part of making nice music for everyone to enjoy and your motivations for it? Thank you. Sorry if someone has asked this before. I'm sort of new here. Well, welcome to the club. Um, what is your favorite part of making music? Um, honestly, I, I, love, I love everything about it, and that's why I do it. I love... Um, being able to create content that makes other people happy. I love being able to do make stuff that I personally love doing. Um, I love working with uh, computers and electronics and stuff like that. I love hardware. I just love music in general. I love making money. <laughs> um, uh, literally all of it. Um, I love being able to have a, um, all the support. But I, I'd say my the coolest thing, I think, is being able to make stuff that people enjoy. And I think that is the most rewarding um, thing of all. And this, the second most important one is probably just, I, I feel good when I make music. It's, it's, I love putting my emotions into a song. Um, and that's definitely probably the other, probably the main reason I do it. I don't know. I got so many reasons for doing it. If you could go back to a point in the fandom, what year and why? Um, to be completely honest, I don't really know. I'd probably go back as early as possible. Um just so that I can enjoy it all over again. Um, I feel like since I started listening to Pony Music and watching the show, a lot of people have disappeared. You stayed for quite a bit. Wanted to thank you that for that. Of course, man, I love it. Well, I mean, 
it, if you like it, why would you uh, why would you why would you change? Um, obviously, people's uh, what they like and their opinions always change, and um, people are always changing. And and you gotta respect that as the artist. I definitely understand a lot of people's you know what they like changes. Um, but I, I can't see the the excuse where people are like, I'm leaving um, to look more professional, and and then they delete all their all their old videos. That's some total bull. <laughs> I'm gonna be completely honest. Um, in my experience with labels, uh, having that kind of stuff on your channel, nobody gives, nobody, nobody cares. Uh, labels are in it to make money. If you're gonna make money, they're gonna, they're gonna sign you no matter what. Um, obviously, um, they're gonna try and make as much money as possible. So having copyrighted content on your channel uh, might get you in trouble. So that I can see why you would, you would probably take that down. Um, but uh, trying to hide it and stuff like that, I, that, I think that's just people being bitter. Um, but next question. What inspires you to make godlike songs? You guys are so nice. Um, stuck in my head. What inspired me? I, that's been a, a big question. What has inspired me? Uh, so many, so much stuff has inspired me. I could, I could make an, again. I could make a whole video on it. Um, but yeah, what is? What do you think is your greatest success? Probably my first NCS track, Harpuya, uh, and that's because I wanted to be on NCS for. Um, for like three years since I started making house music, me and my, my old friend Ben. Um, it's funny, it's like I, I, I messaged him and I was like, dude, I'm gonna make this track, it's gonna be easy, I'm gonna be on NCS in a week, I'm gonna be loaded with cash. And he was like, bullsh, no, you're not, you suck. And, and I was like, oh yeah. And so that sort of inspired me to uh, go ahead and um, work for about three years to, to get that song on that damn label. <laughs> um, but I finally did it, and uh, I felt amazing. It was really cool to finally uh, achieve something you'd wanted to do. Setting a goal, working for it, and then finally reaching it, is, it's, it's an amazing feeling. And um, I definitely think setting goals um, as a producer is a good idea. Maybe not so specific, because um, there is certainly a decent chance you could set a goal and maybe you want to get on this specific label and you, it's just not meant to be and you'll never get on that label. Um, but if you set your goal, maybe it, you might find yourself in a place even better. Um, that That's another thing with music and producing is I never know where I'm going to be in a week uh, or two weeks or three weeks. Um, I'm always changing and I'm always surprising myself and, and doing just crazy stuff I never thought would happen. Um, if you if you asked me a year ago where I thought I'd what, I, what I'd be doing in a year, uh, it, it's way different. So um, I'm just along for the ride, and I'm sure uh, everyone else is too. Uh, do you like Germany and or the Germans? I don't know anything about Germany and or Germans. Um, however, I'm going to Germany this summer, so I'm going to get to uh, learn a lot about them, and that'll be really cool. Uh, can you make music sheets of your songs? Um, the answer to that is probably not because I don't really know how sheet music works. Um, I mean, I used to be able to read it and when I took piano lessons, uh, but I, I don't think I can make sheet music of my songs. Um, but anyone who's good at that is more than welcome to try. If you want to ask me, I'll send you the midis and you can make the sheet music for it. Uh, what do you do in your free time besides making music? Snowboarding. Shredding the knot. Um, yeah, I do a lot of snowboarding, outdoor activities, um, and just hanging out with friends. Uh, do you, are you going to change your style to dubstep or electronic? Uh, please don't stop making anime step, anime sound voices. It's dope. Uh, you're really good at it. Um, I think by that you mean don't, don't change the style you're, uh, you're working on. Um, and the answer to that is, I'm sorry, but, um, the music has to evolve. Um, if I kept making the same song over and over and over again, um, people would get bored of it pretty fast. And so I, I always like to be uh, unique and always changing my style and, and doing stuff I like to do. Um, and maybe I'll make a song you don't like, and maybe I'll make a song you really do like. Um, and that's just kind of just kind of how it goes, um, unfortunately. But I'm sure if you keep searching, there will always be music um, that you like out there. So. Um, Unfortunately, I um, I'm, I'm almost always changing styles, and I always feel I always like to think I'm changing my style for the better. So, uh, which genre have you always wanted to do but have never tried? Um, anything with like growls or bass growls or like dubstep. Like I've always wanted to try that, but I've never been good at, at synthesizing those types of sounds. 
Um, so it's, it's kind of been hard to, to do that. Um, it's definitely something I wanted to try. Um, what I'm getting into a little more is, is, is glitch music. You could hear it in, a, um, oh, what was it? Nightmare. What am I thinking? Uh, yeah, the second drop of Nightmare, I got sort of into it, and I want to get into it a little more, too. Um, maybe some full-length glitch songs would be cool in the future. Uh, you probably know about Phantom Sage's decision of not allowing other channels to promote his songs. Uh, now, you both had songs on NCS, for example, in the past. Uh, do you ever think about doing something like Phantom Sage did, or does a channel as big as NCS help you as more as it hurts you? That's an interesting question. Um, for those of you who don't know, Phantom Sage, super talented artist. I love his music, um, personally. I listen to it all the time. Um, but he recently decided to um, stop releasing with labels and promo channels and stuff like that and just focus on his own channel um, from there on. And I think he even deleted his SoundCloud. Um, I think, I understand where he's coming from, certainly. Um, and I, I think um, that's really up to the individual um, and what they want to get out of music and why they're doing it. Um, personally, I have no problem with releasing with NCS or um, any, any promo channels. Uh, to me, it's just about the music. I don't care who releases it. I don't care who uploads it. I don't care who nightcores it. It's music is music. Everyone can enjoy it. Um, Obviously, I, I, uh, there's also a part of me who wants to be uh, more on the business side um, and help grow um, as many followers as I can and also make uh, as much um, money as well, which is, is, is always very nice. Um, but at the, at the core of it, I really, I really don't mind all that much. And I think NCS definitely helps a lot, um, and so, so do promo channels. Um, but in Phantom Sages... Um, I think maybe maybe he was uh, he dried out on NCS. He'd gotten all the fans he could get from them. Uh, he's been on there quite a bit, um, but it, it sort of just depends on the person and what they want to do with their career. Who is your favorite pony? Not Rainbow. Da I'm just kidding. It's Rainbow Dash. Um, that that's not true. We gotta go back to that one. Uh, uh, I really like Spitfire. Um, my girl Tempest gotta represent, uh, and then I also really like Starlight Glimmer, but. Those, my, I, can't, I can't pick a favorite. Come on. Do you like Formula One? Um, to be honest, I've never really watched any or gotten into it at all. But um, I'm always open to new ideas. Maybe I'll have to watch a race or two. Do you have any tips on learning to mix? Um, two tips. One, watch as many tutorials as you can. If maybe say you're eating lunch and you're gonna watch like the new Logan Paul vlog or something, um, instead put on like some tutorials. Um, even if it's just about random stuff, you never know. There might be a little um, little tidbit or fact in there that'll teach you something you didn't know. Um, other thing is just practice. That's the main one is um, uh, mixing and knowing what sounds good and what sounds bad just comes through a lot of practice. And unfortunately, there is no one easy way to get good. It just takes a lot of practice. What is your favorite type of music to listen to? Um, trance, progressive trance. I listen, literally, I, I think I like every genre except for like that mumble rap stuff. I think that's kind of, kind of boring. I like anything that's melodic. Uh, so stuff like progressive trance, um, even drum and bass a lot of times. Um, I, I really like that. But I also like some of the heavier stuff like uh, um, dubstep and those genres. Uh, we make graphic arts for money. Um, short answer, no. Long answer, maybe. Um, I do make a lot of my own graphics on my channel, um, and I like to think I'm okay at it, um, but I, I don't don't necessarily like making it for money, because I feel like my skills are very limited to what I can do, and even when I'm making stuff for my channel, I sort of have to, uh, it takes me a long time, and I have to go back and, and learn a, a bunch of stuff when I make it. Um, so making graphic arts for money, I wouldn't feel comfortable having someone pay me to make that. Uh, music, on the other hand, I'll, I'll make music for money any day. Um, I make uh, Russ songs a lot of times too for some of those Norwegian groups and, and that's always fun to do um, and it's cool to see uh, uh, these little communities um, just the whole Russ community I think is pretty cool um, if you could only use one aftermarket plugin in, in a song in FL Studio what plugin would you use to make your music um, that's a good question I want to say silent because I'm so used to it and I, I can feel like I can do a lot with it um, but I do think it's kind of limited, so I don't really know. I'm going to be honest. I, I feel like I'd have to think about that. 
Um, maybe Serum, because it seems to have a lot of features backed into it. How do you send your demos to NCS? You know, I get this question quite a lot. I probably get it the most. Um, so what you want to do is you want to go down to your local post office, get an envelope, get a flash drive, put your demo on the flash drive, put the flash drive in the envelope, write the address of NCS on it. Uh, you can probably find it on their website or something. Um, send it in the mail, and I can guarantee you they will listen to it. Uh, which song are you most disappointed with the way it turned out? That is a good question. Um, before we start, I love all my songs, and I'm very proud of all of them. I don't like to release a song I'm disappointed in. Um, so short answer is I'm not disappointed in a single one. I love how they all turned out. Um, but I feel like if I had to pick one, um, and this is, this is controversial because everyone I say, tell this to, they say they love it, is, uh, is a Firelight, my collab with Aurelia and, um, Pegasus. I feel like the mixing, the, uh, the mixing on the house just wasn't up to par with what I could do at the time. Because I made that song right after I made, uh, Freeze. I know they were released opposite, um, but that's because 99 Lives. Um, but I f definitely feel like, um, I feel like I could have done a little better on that. And I was a little disappointed, um, I didn't, I wish I would have spent more time on it. Um, but on the whole, I still love the song and loved how it turned out and had some fun uh, collabing with Pegasus and Aurelia. Uh, any fandom music musicians uh, you've always wanted to or are planning to collaborate with? Always wanted to? I've always wanted to collaborate with Black Griffin um, and Michelle Krieber. I love their music, listen to it all the time. Probably some of my favorite uh, musicians. Uh, planning to collaborate with? Um, no one set in stone. I really want to collab with uh, Forever Free Brony again. Um, I think we'll be playing at some conventions together, so having some more songs um, would be cool, um, but I, I haven't asked him yet, um, nor do I have a song ready yet, so um, just ideas. Uh, really, I don't know. I always like, um, a lot of collaborations are more spur of the moment. Someone will ask me, they'll send me something cool they have, and I'll, I'll go for it. I'll just say, yeah, let's, let's work on it. Um, how can I get a music style like yours? I always find myself making sad music. Aw. And uh, do you plan on giving uh, an FLP? Um, so first question, how can you make music uh, in my style? Um, the two, two parts to that. First, my question is, why would you want to make music in my style? I always find that people, it's way more fun to make music in your own style. Um, now, I, I understand when people want to uh, make another style for fun. Um, definitely uh, understand that. I'm just going to put this on. So, um... Making us copying styles, yeah, uh, I'm, a, I'm a bit lost on that one. Let's go to the second question. Uh, do you plan on giving out an FLP? Um, unfortunately, no, I don't, I don't really like to give out FLPs. I do in my Sounds of the Nebula um, uh, sample packs, but that I, even then I didn't really want to do that. I only did that um, to give more, provide more content for you guys. Um, so I, I don't really like giving out FLPs. I feel like they're, it's more of a private thing. Um, um, but if you want some, you can you can find them in the Sounds of the Nebula pack. How many dubs do you take in a Fortnite Nerd Cake? You take too many, Nerd King. All right, how long have you been doing music? Talk about your music history and how you started. That is a good question, but I feel like the answer to that is on the channel. If you guys want to know um, how I create music, um, you're more than welcome to. Uh, um, I have all, all the videos here, and in my 1K subscriber special, I, go, I talk about it a, a bit more. Um, but I feel like the channel itself sort of tells the history of how I started. Um, I started music in late 2013. I started it in the summer of 2013, but I made my first song um, after a couple months. I didn't really have a computer. I sort of ran it off my mom's computer, um, and I would just mess around every couple hours. Um, but once I got my own, I sort of wanted to get serious about it. Um, and I eventually started making actual songs. Do you like marshmallows? I, I don't like marshmallows. I'm going to be honest, guys. They're, they're too sugary for me. Um, I like one every now and then. I really like those coconut ones. Like the ones with the little... Uh, they're brown and they have the coconut thingies on them. Those are really good. How has the fandom affected your music career? Do you still think you would be where you are um, without it? Uh, really positively, in fact. It's funny because I get a lot of people who are like, Don't you think you'd be more popular if you stop making music about ponies and to be completely honest no no for two reasons one people are going to want listen to music specifically for the reason that has something they like that it's about something they like and second um like 90 percent of the other fans just don't care at all like it could be about whatever and as long as it's good music they'll like it 
um, which is cool. And, and, and obviously, um, the people who, uh, who hate on it more are a little more vocal. So it, uh, sort of skews the opinion. Um, and a lot of people think it's, it's doing a lot more damage. Um, but it's actually not, um, it's definitely helped a lot. And I feel like I, I get a lot of support from both the fandom and people who aren't in it as well. Um, which is uh, really nice. Do you play Xbox One, PC, or PS4? I currently play on PC. I don't actually play that that much, that many video games. Um, um, but I, when I do play, I play on PC all, all the time. Um, I used to play on Xbox 360, um, but it's usually just whatever my friends play on. Um, Christian's here. It's been so long. Uh, bef like before in your 10K. I, I, it's, it's crazy stuff has happened. I like I said, you never know where you're gonna be in six months. Uh, do you plan on expanding your work into different musical uh, genres like exhilarating trance stamp or epic symphony? Uh, I don't know about those specifically, um, but I definitely want to try a lot of new styles. I feel like now that I've sort of got the basis of music production down I and, and I can make songs that don't make your ears bleed, I can, um, I can sort of experiment a little more. And that's kind of what I want to get into in these coming up months and years. Or, and, and, is just sort of experimenting. Um, I, I've gotten my goals, I got on NCS basically, and after that I was kind of like, oh crap, what do I do now? Um, so I really want to experiment more with musical genres, and, and those, that's a lot of my new goals, is trying new stuff. Um, do you plan on revisiting your old work, uh, like some of your new inspirations of your old music, or interpretations? Um, you certainly. I, I'm, I'm a bit reluctant. I, I'm never really enthusiastic about going back and redoing an old song. Uh, even when I did it for Timeless, it was kind of like, uh, um, but every now and then I'll, I'll get super excited about it. And um, something I really want to do is go back and make a remix of Nebula, a VIP of that. I think that'd be really cool. Um, what I don't really know. I don't have any plans to do any, but that definitely is something I will probably end up doing sometime in the future. Uh, what programs do I use? Uh, FL Studio. Um, I use FL Studio for music. Um, I'll use Audacity for recording sometimes. Um, and then a lot of VSTs within FL Studio. Uh, will there ever be another Remix competition? Congrats on 10K. Thank you very much. Um, oh man, Remix competition. To be completely honest, I have no idea. Um, I know you guys really like those, and I would love to do one again. Um, but they, they, they're a lot of work. Um, they definitely... Uh, take a lot of work and um, I feel like uh, currently I don't have any plans to do one but it is definitely a possibility in the future um, I will obviously post about it um, but currently I don't have any plans so but you never know uh, how long did you learn to make music uh, and how did it come out at first uh, can you give any tips for beginners um, for beginners stick to it just keep working um, make your life music um, if, if you really like it, uh, that's pretty easy to do. Um, watch tutorials, uh, meet people who also like music, meet friends, um, and just practice and have fun doing it. Um, how long uh, it took me, I'm still learning, and I've been doing it for, I, I want to say, five, four, five, or six years. It's since 2013. Um, and it, it wasn't good at first. No, no one's music is very good at first, um, but it always gets better. The more you practice, the better you'll get. Uh, who inspired, what inspired you to make me, oh, I, you know, I, I knew I was, oh wait, this is the original question, that's it, all right, ah, oh, man, okay, so, um, well, that was it, guys, I hope you liked the, uh, 10k subscriber special, um, if you have any more questions, feel free, feel free to ask them in the description, um, or if my answers have brought up more questions, I will be, uh, more than happy to answer them, um, I hope you guys liked it, um, and I'm, I'm really happy to be at 10,000 subscribers, um, I'm looking forward to these next couple months, these next couple years. Um, i got some exciting stuff coming. Um, to close it out, though, I made a cool little video about all the memories I've had leading up to 10,000 subscribers.
So hopefully that wasn't too sad for you guys. Um, obviously, we want to leave on a positive note here. So um, uh, things into the future. I don't have um, I don't have any music right now. I want to start working on maybe a song um, uh, this next week. Um, but I have no idea what I'm going to make so far. So um, hopefully something something cool. <laughs> Um, but I also, I'm working a lot on DJing. I have some performances coming up in the summer. Um, the only one confirmed now is um, uh, HRPC, High Roller Pony Con, in Vegas. So if you're in Las Vegas around uh, the beginning of June, um, you're more than welcome to come. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, and I'm lo really looking forward to it. Love the town or city of Las Vegas. It's a cool place. Um, and then I got some others um, coming up too. Um, I'll make an announcement video on those coming up in the future. Um, but I'm really looking forward to it. Um, gonna be a great year, um, and I'll see you guys at 100K.